My guest on the Rabdopsis Research Roundup today is uh, Vinod Kumar from the John Innes Centre. And it's an exciting time for the lab since he's had two papers already come out in Cell Press uh, in 2017, already in, in the first month in 2017. So first of all, there's a paper uh, published in um, Cell Reports, the title of which is uh, DEET1 and High 5 Control PIF4 Mediated Thermosensory Elongation Growth Through Distinct Mechanisms. And then secondly, a uh, paper that's come out in cur uh, Current Biology uh, with the title PIF4 Coordinates Thermosensory Growth and Immunity in Arabidopsis. So clearly both these uh, papers have a similar theme around uh, the PIF4 protein and also how it responds to thermosensory growth. So thanks very much, Finod, for, uh, for chatting to us again. Oh, and. Uh, you know, it would be great if you could give an overview of how these two papers, you know, go into this PIF4 heat sensing story. Absolutely. So, so as, as we talked before, so, so the, the interest that we have is to actually understand how plants integrate environmental signals and then how do they uh, sense and integrate different environmental signals and coordinate their growth. So, as, as we are all aware, so over the last few years, so one transcription factor, that is PIF4, has actually emerged as one of the central signaling curve, which actually controls uh, growth in response to different environmental conditions, such as changes in temperature or light qualities, for example, in, in shade avoidance and, and such. So, so one of the uh, major outputs that we can actually see, uh, or, or responses that we can see, uh, when a plant actually sees a change in environmental signal is at the very uh, early stages of seedling growth, that elongation growth. That's, it's a very good marker for how, how the plant actually responds to the environment. Okay. And this is one of the key uh, processes that are controlled by the transcription factor P4. That's a BHLS transcription factor. So, so, so what we are interested in is to understand how uh, growth in response to temperature, how it is coordinated with other signals. Mm -hmm. So, so in the in the first paper that we are talking about is is how uh, light and temperature signaling components come together and then coordinate growth, and which is dependent on before. So, what we actually find is uh, that the uh, molecular components that are actually known to be involved in light signaling, mm -hmm. such as deethylated one and constituting photomorphogenesis one, uh, that one and COP one, so they control or promote PIF mediated. Uh, thermosensory growth. If, if we don't have the functions of F1 or COP1, then the plants don't respond to changes in temperature by uh, they, are, they, they don't have that elong typical elongation growth. Mm -hmm. So we know that now uh, that both that one and COP1 are required to promote PIF mediated elongation growth. Now we know that it is through two uh, ways of controlling it. First of all, it promotes expression of PIF for itself, and then it stabilizes both that one and COP1 stabilizes uh, uh, PIF protein. So, so, so uh, in, in, a, in a very uh, dramatic way, so that if, if you don't have these proteins, you don't have PIF4 uh, expression and whatever uh, PIF4 is there that is not stable. So it is okay. very important. And at the same time, there's another protein, HI5, which was implicated in uh, light signaling, mm -hmm. which is controlled by COP1 and uh, that one. The, the proposed me me mechanism is that COP1 and that one actually control the level of high five. High five negatively regulates elongation growth. So okay. what we actually see is that high five also uh, controls uh, PIF mediated growth, but not through uh, a mechanism that's that's apparent in in, in the other uh, uh, regulatory uh, module. Here, okay. what we actually see is that high five actually competes with PIF4 uh, for binding to the uh, target genes. So, in, in, in effect, what actually happens is high fi controls PIF mediated activation of, of genes that are required for elongation growth and which, which can be modulated by changes in temperature. Okay. So, what we actually see is that th these two desperate um, uh, signaling uh, component uh, or modules kind of come together so that then the plant now have a much more efficient way of, of coordinating growth and it's again so 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 uh, p4 is now again acting as a central hub where different environmental signals can be can be put in so this is this is a nice um, uh, what i would say a regulatory uh, a module or, or, or a framework that we can now start to build uh, so, so the different uh, layers of regulation kind of 
give the plant a very nice uh, tool for fine-tuning growth to suit uh, the environment where it actually grows in. So the second paper kind of uh, goes uh, in the same uh, angle of actually looking at how different uh, environmental signals come together. So, so we, here we are all talking about growth. So we all know that as, as temperature increases in, in spring, so that's when plants actually restart their growth after the, the restraint that they have uh, during winter. So it's, it's all about how plants see the uh, increase in temperature and conducive condition for increasing growth. At the same time, so in the second paper in, in current biology, so what we are talking about is the interaction between uh, thermosensory growth and defense. So, so we all know, so there is this um, uh, accepted uh, antagonistic relationship between growth and defense. So, so that's that's very well uh, uh, depicted in in mutants, which actually are constitutively activating defense. So they, they they activate their defense without the, the without the need or without presence of a pathogen. So these mutants, so they they they. Uh, keep their defense mechanisms on all the time, and therefore it's, it's, it's very uh, importantly, so you can actually see that they are growth uh, retarded. So they, they, they're, they're standard, they're very pushy, they don't grow very much. But, uh, and they, they show very high resistance to pathogens. And so, yeah. so these mutants, so they can be suppressed uh, by in growth at increasing temperature. So their, okay. their defense is, is lowered and their reduced growth is restored by uh, uh, incubating them at higher temperature, moderately higher temperature. Okay. So what we find, so this is also fundamentally very important to actually see that temperature actually suppresses immunity. Mm-hmm. So as we, uh, as we grow higher and higher in temperature, the plant loses its ability to successfully defend against pathogens. Right. Okay. So what we find is that the suppression of immunity and restoration of growth of this constitutive defense mutant. So these both these processes are actually PIF dependent. Okay. So that's 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 very exciting because now PIF being a central component for growth, so that is also now involved in controlling uh, susceptibility. So that was exciting. So so we went ahead and, and looked at uh, PIF4 mutant itself, which actually shows the molecular signatures of a plant which actually has higher defense responses. So PIF actually have reduced growth because it's, it is actually required positively regulating growth. Mm-hmm. So so not only that PIF was essential for, for increasing subtility, it was sufficient. So so if you actually uh, overexpress PIF in a moderate manner in aeroprocess, so that you can actually see that so it actually increases growth at the same time uh, gene expression that is required for defense as well as resistance to uh, a bacterial pathogen actually goes down. Okay. So, so then if you actually look at, so it can be modulated environmentally. So PIF is actually controlled by photoreceptors, 5B, phytochrome B. Mm-hmm. So, so if you if you modulate phytochrome B function, so you can actually see that it, it apparently is, is reflected in in PIF4 output. So if you if you have reduced phytochrome B function, you have more PIF output, therefore more growth, and those plants are again more susceptible to pathogen. Right. And so if you increase uh, phytochrome B function. You have lesser P4 output, reduced growth, and they are more uh, resistant to uh, a pathogen. So, so that's that's very interesting. So now, which actually sees that uh, the, the PIF mediated uh, growth module can be environmentally modulated by different mechanisms, mm-hmm. and then if if and then that can be then reflected in in this altered balance between growth and defense. Mm-hmm. So, if this is a mechanism that we can actually find in the lab, so that should be. If it is meaningful, then we should actually find that out in the wild. In Arabidopsis strains that are adapted to different environmental conditions, so they should use this as a tool to, to, to organize or optimize their growth and development and defense. Mm-hmm. So this is why we looked at Arabidopsis natural strains. Uh, so so we, we, we looked at natural accessions for their difference in thermosensory growth. And we found one particular accession, uh, Nosen, which actually shows a very robust growth and increased response temperature as in an increased P4 uh, function. But then we, we actually looked at it and we in fact found that this, this particular accession which actually shows robust growth is actually showing increased susceptibility. 
So which 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 is very very interesting. So but still again, so we don't we do not know whether this is the same mechanism. So we went back and actually looked at what's the molecular basis for this increased growth. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have to define that these two phenotypes, robust growth and susceptibility, such so susceptibility, they actually go segregate, okay. and that was down to. Uh, polymorphism that we found in the photoreceptor phytochrome B. Okay. So we could actually complement that with wild type of IB, the reference sequence, uh, to actually suggest that it's actually phytochrome B modulation that actually leads to this changed growth and, and, and difference in, in that accession. And there are a few other accessions also that we can find. The same same way, so you, you have a compromised phytochrome B function, as I explained to you earlier, so you have more PIF output leading to more robust growth and, and reduced resistance. So this is, this is now, uh, you can find several examples in, in the wild where reproductive successions actually use this module to, to fine-tune uh, their response to, to, to the environment. So ultimately what we actually see is that P4, if you increase P4, so it already uh, suppresses immunity, so we, we, which we can use in a different way, right? So if you, if you can actually modulate P4 or modulate thermosensory growth, you can actually enhance immunity even at higher temperature, which is a major issue for crop plants as, as we as we step into uh, uh, the field. So, so as, as temperature increases, uh, crops are getting more and more susceptible to, yeah, to, to constant. So, so, so as, 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 as I said before, so if you have a reduced beef function, then the resistance actually becomes more resilient to temperature. So you can actually have resistance which can actually stand the test of temperature. So, which is very, very exciting because so far we know almost all cases of disease resistance is suppressed at moderately higher temperature. Okay. Okay. So, we're finding that it is this growth defense uh, module, so it's a PIF being in the center, by uh, modulating PIF4 function, we can actually uh, get uh, resistance which can uh, stand higher temperatures. Okay. So, which was very exciting. Yeah. Us. So that's that's really excellent. You've done a great job distilling these two papers into uh, into ten minutes there. But you, so as you said, very interesting about you know the the ability to modulate P four levels and, and have this this resistance to temperature and, and immunity. So is that something you are going to take out of Arabidopsis and try and look at other yes. crop plants? Is that Absolutely. is that in the plan? So, so currently we are we are we are doing experiments with uh, uh, some um, crop models okay. to actually see whether we can actually extrapolate that and and extend that to other systems out of Arabidopsis. Okay. I, I hope uh, we'll be able to share with you some some results sometime sooner. So. Excellent, excellent, and and. Maybe going back to the first paper, and well, the, the whole really, it's such a beautiful system that every, all these signals, so the light signal through 5B, and then and there's been a recent paper as well about UV signaling, which, which feeds into this kind of a PIF4 signal as well. And, and you know, these well-known mutants, which all, all, all kind of feed into this. But from my own point of view, so from my own research a while ago, looking at the auxin response, so we know that auxin is involved in this hypocotyl growth, which responds to high temperature. So can we say now anything about how the PIF4 module interacts with the auxin response? Is there anything known about that at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. So, so um there was a paper published by, which was led by Gary Franklin. Okay. Uh, yep. So, so I, I, I was also part of that. Uh, so, so which actually suggests that P4 actually activates auxin uh, biosynthetic genes. Okay. So it, it actually promotes auxin production at higher temperature. Ah, right. So, okay. so exactly. So this was this was in 2011, 2012. Right. Okay. So yeah, it directly that. activates auxin biosynthesis. Yeah. Genes. Okay. Excellent. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, Vinod, for, for discussing this. Yeah, I think uh, you've done a great, uh, great job of, this, as I said, distilling all that information down into uh, into into a nice chat. So, as I said, we look forward to uh, hearing more about the the crop work in the future, and also also your continued Arabidopsis work. Thanks very much. Well, thank you.